Welcome back, basketball fans. Welcome back. Man, it's been a minute. KPA won the KBF championship, both the men and women's side. It's been awesome. It's been excellent. But in this video, we'll be talking about the provisional list that came out from the Kenya Morans. So the Kenya Morans are set to participate in the FIBA Afro Can the, this coming month. And in this video, I'll be breaking down my selection of the players and I'll also be talking about the reason why I've selected those players to represent Kenya. And full disclaimer, uh, this is not the official list. This is just my selection for the people that I feel like they can be able to re represent the Kenyans, uh, Ke the Kenya Morans and Kenyans in the FIBA Afro Khan. So this is not in any way to... Um, take this list and say that it's the official one this is just my selection i know they're going to come up with their own list i know they're going to come up with their own selections but this is my opinion on what i think the list might be and how it can be able to like create a foundation for players to be able to move forward especially with the national team so first things first in this list i am not including the international players that's let's just get out of the way that real quick because as much as we want to include them, I just want to keep it local because I've seen majority of the African teams. They're trying to keep, um, they're trying to keep their teams local, and they're trying to make sure that they are grooming their homegrown local talent. So I'll be picking teams from the Premier League, and majority of my selections are gonna come out there, and you're going to see how interesting it's gonna be because when I was making the just the player, you know, brief profiles on who I think should be playing this position. Actually, I'll be showing even my starting fives, the guards and the reserves. And the reason why I picked them this is something that um, I had a lot of fun making. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So I'll first of all list the names of the guys from the Kenya Premier League. So number one is Victor Bussera. He got from the Equity Bank team. They could do much got Eugene Adera from KPA, Dolph Otieno uh, from KU, you've got David Siaji, Eric Motora from the Lindsay Warriors, Ariel Ortega from the USIU Tigers, Dennis Koja from Strathmore University, Griffin Ligari, Grifo from Nairobi City Thunder, City Thunder, Dima from Nairobi City Thunder, James Mwangi, Equity Dumas, Brand Sanzioka from the Lindsay Snipers, Ken Washera, Lennox. From the KPA Dockers, Joe Byron, KPA, Brian Sivachi, KPA, Paul Rabu from the Africa, African Nazarene University, Ivan Ombiru, KU, Tyler Ongwai, ABC, ABC Fighters, Joseph Gitao, Stanbeck, and Victor Cheng from the Equity Dumas. So, also from the players playing in other leagues, I'll not be including them in this selection. I try to keep it as local as I could. I don't want to say local, but I just want to keep it Kenyan. <laughs> okay, I know they're Kenyan, but I just want to keep it from the players playing in the Kenya Premier League. So, yeah, so we've got Derek Ogechi from Minnesota, we've got David Marble from Detroit, Ariel Okar from the from the Dynamo team in Burundi, Fidel Okoth, Busha Mokota from playing in APR in Rwanda, Paul Erang in Burundi, Peter Sifuma, UCU Uganda, Ronnie Gundo, in Alberto Dero. So you can see the legacy players. We have uh, Ronnie Gundo, Alberto Dero, Bushwa Mokota, Ariel Okar, uh, Tai Longoy. I know Tai Longoy quit the team. I'm not sure if he's back, but I'm yet to confirm that. I'm not going to be using a lot of all these legacy players. I tried to add them. And the only two players that I thought of adding just to bring the veteran experience to this new squad that I've created. Uh, from the from the talent pool here in this list, I'm just make sure I'll just add. I'll make sure to add. We have Griffin Legari and Victor Bos here, so I'm just checking him from my notes on my side. But anyway, so from my list, my selections are: got Eugene Adair from KPA, Lennox from KPA, Ken Washira, Dolph Otieno. This Masumbaka from Nairobi City Thunder, Ariel Ortega, USIU. So those are from the guards position. Those are the six guys I'm going with. And in the forwards, we have Joe Byron, Paul Raburu, 
Victor Ocheng, James Mwangi, Ivan Om- Ivan Ombiru, Dennis Koja and Joseph Kitao. So in my starting five, I try to approach it in a different way. So to fix up like the chemistry part, I try to include three KP players. Okay, they're coming fresh off from the KP from the KBF finals. They have played significant time together. So reuniting that chemistry is not going to be that difficult, especially in training camp, because these players already played with each other. So to deal with the chemistry, I'll put three KPA players in there. So I'm going to start off with the starting point guard. I'm going to start with Lennox from the KPA Dockers. The reason why I put Lennox in the number one spot was he's the primary ball handler, three-point threat. He's a fast break option, especially when we have like those long passes that you need to be able to get those transition points. We have him in there. He can be a very good short creator in there. And even in his short creation, he can be able to make many manufactured points on himself. As much as he can be able to generate, he can be able to create for himself as well. He's a pick and roll threat, especially when you put him and in pick and roll situations, the Joe Byron, he can be able to like slash in or kick it out for the open man on the three. And he's also an excellent passer. And I can even say, not only excellent, I feel his, his passing is underrated. Majority of the time is him who has the ability to orchestrate the offense. And that's the reason why I picked him as the starting point guard. But moving on to the number two spot, Eugene Nader from KP again. So he's a first style two guard. Three point shooting is good. Point, I mean, he can even go back and play the point guard as well. Fast break points. He can be able to get to give you those points, especially with his with his quick plays. And he's actually very quick on his dribble. So dribbling that ball to get to the other side without the defense being set in there and having the a weak defender, especially uh, guarding him at this at a specific situation in there, he can be able to do that. And he's also a good shot creator. One-on-one ISO player can take you on the ISO. He can, you know, tell everyone to move out of the way and reject the screen. And he's that guy. And also a certified bucket getter. So, and that's the reason why he won that finals MVP. So, these these traits that he exhibited in there. And also he played in the road to ball. He actually showed some flashes in there. And you could see his progression in there. So... He's the number two guy. And in the number three spot, we've got Siaji Davis. I know Siaji Davis. He is a very versatile wing. I saw him in the playoffs last season. And he's carrying on and he's just building on. And also what he's doing in the all-on basketball uh, training is actually just paying off. So versatile wing, wing um, mid-range to inside threat. He can be... A number one scoring option in any given situation or even any given possession especially teams can be able to go to him to get a bucket so can we go number one or number two scoring option elite two-way player he doesn't get much credit on his defense but he can be able to play defense it's just in some situations you just need to find a balance to be able to do that and i feel like he can't be able to find that balance in there so depending on the defensive matchup he can be able to like adjust in there on the fly and he's also a certified bucket getter in there so no much abundance of scoring especially from the one through three and the most interesting part is the number four spot because the front court three four and five and you have the good front court in there and the back court is elite you have to make sure like you you have a front court that can be able to like you know get you like those posts, uh, those those second chance points, get you them post plays, can be able to like help you in the pick and roll. So I rolled him. I made sure to get um Joe Byron in there because he he played for the KPA Dockers, especially before we started. I made sure to say that when you have like a starting five that has like at least three KPA players, that chemistry able to fix it in there, and. These players already play together. So when you have a situation where you're running a pick and roll with uh, Joe Byron, with Eugene or Lennox, it can be a bit easier because they can be able to, he can be able to read those plays. So he, go, he has good post play. 
He, like, he can't be able to create on the post. He's a pick and roll threat, especially when he rolls hard. Considering the fact that he's able to like um, you know, he just he's just able to create his own space in there inside and can be able to finish at the rim. So he's one of those guys who when you have a situation where he has the ball and he's on the perimeter, his eyes is always looking at the shooter, at the nearest shooter, and he can be able to set a screen and, and allow a shooter to be able to do that. Those are the type of plays that he was running with Ken Oshiro when he was in KVA. So yeah, he's actually been good. And at its five spot, we have James Mwangi from the Kutidumas. Very good post player. He has the low post offense in there. He's a rim protector. And I can see an underrated like short, <laughs> short blocker because he can be able to block those shots. He's a very good shot blocker in there. I don't know why he doesn't get a lot of credit with that, but a lot of times it's just you just see him, you know, get to the foul, get to the line. And inside scoring pretty good, rebounding, and he's a two-way big man in there. So that's my starting five. So Lennox, Eugene, Siaji, Joe Byron, and James. And looking at even the starting five, you could see this. I don't feel like there's a lot of weak spots in there because it's just a little bit of, bit of tweaking in there and you'll be able to like see how these guys can be able to like play together and the fun, the good thing about um the fun thing about like that starting five even if you go at the reserves at the guards and the fourth position you can be able to like just change up a bit you can be able to like you know put an Ariel Ortega in a in a Lennox in, in Lennox place or even you can put Eugene at his place so swapping them it's much much easier in there because I had to make sure that we had good depth and quality, not only depth, but quality in the, both the guards and the forward position because you cannot have a lot of guards in there and the front court doesn't look as, as much. Uh, but I'm open to like your feedback on the comments. Please be sure to leave your feedback on the comments. I might follow up in another video just, talk, just adding on to <laughs> what I've created. So in the reserves for the guards, you've got Ken Washira. He's a three-point threat, can be able to score off the bench, can lead the second unit off the bench in a, lock a lockdown defender. I saw his play, especially in the road to Ball, and also he played for the Morans last year. Although it wasn't the best and ideal situation for him, he showed some flashes of he knows what he's doing in there. So having him on the squad is necessary, especially if you're to of offset like any three-point deficit, he can be able to like hit that three when you need it. And number two, we've got Dolph Fortiano from KU. This is a guy who is good. He's a good shot creator, playmaker, an elite passer. One trait that majority of the time just gets overlooked is the fact that he's an elite passer. You can even put him in the... You can, you can even sub him in. And he can give you those quick assists that you need, especially on the fast break, fast break, and you know, off the or, or even in a possession when you have like a situation where you need to find an open man in there, he can be able to make that pass and you know, complete it. And also a good lockdown defender as well. Two way, two way player, but majority of the time I feel like when you utilize Dolph, especially as a guy who can be able to like drive in there and not make and not let the other the defense force him to shoot that's when he's more effective so putting him in there is is a given so then we have Dismas from the Nairobi City Thunder he's a scorer playmaker lockdown defender he can uh, g easily give you 17 to 17 to 20 points just based on like reading the game and being uh, and having the ability to be able to adjust either going mid-range going at the three going inside and especially moving at that size so he's able to like get that ball put the ball on the ground can be able to like you know dribble it a bit and be able to like get that in so he's actually pretty good then you have Ariel Ortega I mean <laughs> he's a three-point threat he sent the Strathmore blades home with that three-point buzzer beater so he's actually pretty good playmaker one-on-one -on -one ISO player also also, Dolph can be, he's also a good one on one ISO player. Not even can be, he's actually good. And he's a, Dolph is a streaky shooter. But when you look at Ariel Ortega, this is a guy that 
can be able to knock down that three when you need it. And that's the three that he used to send the Strathmore Blades home in the finals and also win the championship. So, yeah, Bucky Getter. And he's also a good free throw shooter. And, um, yeah, so that those are the four guards that round out the guards. And I added Griffo in there and Victor Borisiri in there. Just veteran leaders on minutes restrictions. I put them on minutes restrictions because I want to see how they can be able to lead that second unit, how how to lead that unit. Not only the starting five, or Lennox, Eugene, how can they be able to, like, pass, like, that knowledge on how to be able to, like, you know, do things in fee- in the FIBA stage. So, yeah, I know KP have been on a FIBA stage, especially in Rotobal, but they've not been that, as, as have not been in FIBA as long as these guys have been, as long as Griffo has been there. He's been there from way to way back in the first African. So, yeah, having him there is a good thing. And also, Victor, those are guys who have been able to, like, been there, done that, they have played there. So, having them as a virtual presence is key. And moving on to the forwards, we've got Ivan Ombiru from KU. He's a good rim protector, good defender, pick and roll threat. We've seen his play when he plays for KU. And he has a high motor. Uh, he doesn't give up on the play. He makes sure to be able to make the right play. And and on to top it all off, his defense is actually pretty good. So he can be able to block them shots in there because he's a rim protector. Got Dennis Koja, another guy who also played in the road to ball with KPA. Uh, rim running forward, he's agile, especially at his position. He can be able to slash in there and can get them second chance points, which is actually pretty important. Got Victor Chiang, he's been there in the Kenya Moran's teams. Three point threat at any point, like top of the key, baseline, um, elbow shot, he'll be able to knock it down. He's a lockdown defender as well, pick and roll threat, especially with the pick and pops. When he, he can be able to pick and roll and go to the basket. And also he has the ability to pick and pop and hit that open three. Especially when the defense is not even a lot. He's that good, good of a shooter. So and also I'm missing I'm missing the ILU plays he makes with he, he made with James. I just want to see that again. <laughs> especially when they are playing together. And he's also agile as position. He's actually a big guy who can be able to play the number four and also number three. I don't want to play in the number five. I don't want to go small ball, but you can be able to play him as a number three or four. And we got Paul Raburu, a very good uh, forward, elite defender, two-way player, post player, agile at his position. In the 2022, in last year's postseason, if Anu won the playoffs, the Div 1 playoffs, he would have been able to, he would have won the MVP because he led... Um, Anu in every single statistic behind Mario James at the time. So, pretty good. He can be able to clean the glass. He has the ability to finish. He can be able to dunk it immediately. Like um, those points that you need, especially like out of bounds plays, he can be able to read that and very essential. There we've got Joseph Gitao from Stanbic. Good defender, mid range to inside threat. Agile at his size and in his position. So, yeah, so those are the guys that um, I selected, and I just wanted to go 100% local. <laughs> I know I'm just going to get a lot of people coming to the comment section, which I allow. And uh, please be sure to leave a feedback in the comments. This is just my opinion, and this is the squad I will roll with, especially going into this Afrocon, because right now you yeah, just have to give them guys a chance to be able to play there so that you can be able to like see what they can do in there. I'm pretty sure like the list is already out there and the list has already been decided. But for me, this is the this is like the list I would rock with any day, especially when going to Afrocan, because majority of the guys are just focused on the FIBA World Cup right now because man, it's 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 worldwide. So the Afrocan is kinda gonna go past under the radar and you can see how African teams are going in, especially if I take an example of like uh, Nigeria or Angola, what they did, especially Nigeria. I can use Nigeria because when they knew that they're not going to qualify for the FIBA World Cup, they rolled out like the local based players 
and give them some minutes to be able to like you know just play in there so this is actually a good thing because you're giving them exposure early so if you have a situation where we have these players that i have selected they're given exposure earlier so when next year rolls around and there's a FIBA tournament you already know what these guys can produce you already know what these guys can do so you just bring them in and you can be able to see like what they can do in there so th that's just me and looking at the way things are headed you can see teams are getting younger teams are um, making sure that they are grooming players so that they can grow with the team and that's what majority of the teams are doing now so there's no a shot to like the legacy players and you there i feel like their watch has ended they should just ride the sunset and just let the team just evolve and work on a rebuild because right now you can even see what south sudan did they went and revamped the roster and re rebuilt you can see what uganda is trying to do okay the records are not looking good at the time but can you can see what the direction they're taking if we take this direction it can be able to like take us to leaps especially let's say three four five years down the road so not looking at success right now but just making plans to be able to like get to that next level so that's all i got for you guys so please be sure to subscribe to the channel hit that bell so that you can get notified on every single video that i'm posting and please make sure to leave your feedback down in the comments on what you think about my selection and uh about and also tell me what you think about <laughs> my opinions on that just jump it all in the comments and uh yeah man it just feels good to talk about basketball and of course talking about the national team it's been a while i know i made a video um yeah just the other day just talking about the horizon fall but i feel like we can be able to like rise if we try to change up the way we are operating so yeah and also coach cliff is there he's the coach <laughs> yeah so um i'm out peace